Hello everyone. In the previous videos, we have introduced the Zhang organs, Fu organs, extraordinary organs. And those are actually all the organs in Zhang Xiang theories that we need to study. And then from those studies, from those theories, we need to understand the physiological condition of our human activities, the pathological changes of those activities of those activities. These are the function of the physi physi physiology of human physiology in Chinese medicine. And from this video we are going to introduce some body constituents. In the meantime, then, as we introduce these body constituents as well as the function and definition, we will have the example of the explanation of the relationship between the body, the body constituents, orifix, and the organs. What's the what's the function in terms of which function? between which organs and which orifice they are connected, which organ and which body constituents they are connected. So the first we're going to introduce is the vessels. The vessels in Mandarin we pronounce as mai. This is the, the Mandarin pronunciation. So when we take in the mai, the vessels, the mai, refers to vessels, but when we use the Mandarin, the mind refers to not only vessels, it also refers to the pulse. So when we diagnose from the from the wrist, the artery there, we feel the pulse. We, we, it says pulse diagnosis or pulse taking. The pulse we also consider we also pronounce as mind. So Actually, for the body constituents, mind refers to both vessels and the pulse. The pulse we're going to introduce specifically in the diagnostics because it's full of contents and information that we're going to introduce specifically. Here we're going to introduce the vessels. The vessels is the vessel in the body and the vessel is hollowed inside and the vessel because the blood stay in the vessel within the vessel so the vessel also considered as the mansion of the blood or the big house of the blood so that's the mansion of the blood in Huang Di Nei Jin, how does it describe the vessels or the function of the vessels it described that the vessels is something that limits the yin qi the yin qi we're going to introduce in the next few videos that yin qi is the nutrition qi which is the blood and make it smooth for yin qi movements that's called vessels so it might the the structure of the sentence might be strange. That's because of the direct translation from the traditional Chinese. So what's the vessels? That's something or some substance to limit the blood and make the blood move smoothly. This is substance we call mind. We call vessels. That's the the definition of vessels. And the vessels they move all over all over the body without like a circle without without a star and without an end. So there's no star and no end of the vessels. So vessel, the vessel net. It, it, this is actually the similar to the blood circulation in the body. There's no star and no end. The blood circulation or the function of the the function of the vessels is to move the pathway of the qi and blood movements. 
also can pass on the information from different organs. But these functions are very closely related to the organs, such as the, the heart. The heart governs the blood and vessels from the, the function. Physically, the heart is related, it's con directly connected to the vessels. The second is the blood circulation in the vessels. We need the, the qi, the movement of the qi, or the push, the promotion of the qi. Which qi? That's the heart qi. That's when we introduce the heart function. Heart governs the, the blood and vessels. We need the heart qi to move the blood flow. So that's why the heart is very close related to the vessels. The, the vessels and the pulse. The relationship between the vessels the, to the lung, the liver, the spleen. These are all very closely related in the fields of qi. So because of the all in the in the relationship of the blood, you see because all these organs or body constituents as the vessels, the lung, the liver, the spleen, these are all related to the blood. So the blood is the is the agent is the agent between the vessels and other organs. The lung and the vessels. The liver stores blood and can control the volume of the blood and also can prevent bleeding. The spleen also controls the the blood, especially from the blood the blood in lower part of the body. The liver also regulates the qi movements. So these are all very closely related to the normal movements of the blood circulation. That's why the blood, the vessels and pulse are related to the heart and other organs. So from this study, when you heard of this explanation, you will understand how to use these theories that we studied to connect to different organs and orifix body constituents, different tissues. What is the relationship among these organs? The second is the skin. The skin includes the skin all over, the, all over our body the skin, the function of the skin. The first can protect ourselves being attacked by the external pathogens. So the skin is the first boundary of our body against the pathogens. And this function we actually consider as the defensive qi. When we talk about the qi in the philosophy we, we gave you the the different kinds of qi, the defensive qi. When the qi of the body moves to the superficial skin to help us to protect ourselves as the bond, first boundary against the pathogens, this kind of qi we call it defensive qi. So the skin, the skin function, in order to function well, it depends on the qi the qi function, the defensive qi function. The skin also can control the or adjust the sweating, sweat. The sweat is the, re the result of body fluid and also related to the heart, right? 
sweat is the body fluid of the heart. And when the defensive qi is weaker on on our superficial skin, so when the qi is weaker, they cannot control the body fluids on top of our skin. Then we will have excess sweating or some other condition. We will we know sweat, such as if the we attack by the cold condition in such as in winter, we feel cold, the skin, the pores on the skin curls, we don't have sweat. So these are the function of the skin. The skin also have the function to adjust the body temperature. This body temperature, how does the body temperature be, be adjusted by skin? The body temperature in Chinese medicine theories is the result of Zhang Fu movements, especially for the Qi movements. So the yin and yang, the fire and fluids in the body, the, the balance of them to adjust the skin, how to adjust the body temperature, also via the function of sweating of control sweating. The skin also assists the breathing. In our theories, the the lung controls the qi or governs the qi. This qi includes the innate qi and the acquired qi. And the acquired qi include the breathing and the skin is the body constituent of the lung so in this in this way the the lung the breathing function and the, the skin are related there's there was a story that in in overseas but I haven't actually re read the story, I heard of that, so it might be true, might be not true, but it's very close to our theories. That story described that a, a person, they, they are doing actually an experiment. So a friend used the wax to seal his friend's skin all over the body, but after a while, his friend passed away. And then when the forensic doctor came, they found out that the the person was died of asphyxia. So that's because of breathing problem. But you see the story described that the frame was was sealed by the wax on the skin, not the not from the nose, but for the for forensic reports. He says the the person passed away due to the breathing problem. So this is very close to our theories. The skin also related to the breathing. The relationship from between the skin and the organs. First is the lung. The lung. The skin is the body constituent of the lung. And the lung, when the lung disperses the qi and blood, the lung will disperse to the skin. And the second is the, the pulse, the control, the opening and closing of the pulse, also related to the breathing, the breathing function of the lung. That's why actually the, the pose on our skin in Chinese medicine, traditionally we call them the gate of qi. As we said that the qi is the air, also the breathing qi we call it qi. Right? And then the pose on the skin we said that's the gate of qi. That's also in the other way to 
indicates that the skin is related to the breathing and the lung. This is also related to the function of the lung dispersing and descending. The next body constituent is the muscles. Muscles. So because of the these tones are very obvious from from the words directly, so we don't we didn't give you the definition of the muscles. Everyone knows the muscles, so that's the medical term of the the definition is from the medi from exactly the same as your medical the term from your anatomy. The vessels and the skin they are related because they are connected together. Underneath the skin is the muscle. The function of the muscles controls the body movement so your movements your body can your extremities your whole body can move that's because of the movements of the muscles mostly rely on the movement of the muscles although the ligaments also help together but mostly are from the muscles also the muscles can protect our internal organs which organs is related to the muscles? The most closely related organs is the skin, because the muscles is, are the body constituents of the spleen. So for muscles problem, someone very skinny, then we will use the treatments towards the, the, the spleen. So the other is the four extremities, your arms and your legs. These are also where most muscles stay on. So these are also can your extremities, your movements can reflect your spleen function. The ligaments. The ligaments. It's the function of the ligaments is to connect the joints or connect the bones and also to assist the movements. The ligament is related to the liver and also related to the spleen and stomach. The ligament is the body constituents of the liver or you use it Sinus, sinews that's related to the liver. And these ligaments will be nourished by the blood, which also from the liver. The ligament related to the spleen and stomach, that's where the acquired qi come from. If the spleen function was affected and then uh, caused spleen deficiency. In this situation, the patient will have poor nutrition or poor qi and blood. In this condition, they will have like impairment of the muscles and ligaments, which you can show in the movements, the impairments of the movements. The bones refers to or bones in the body also some relate some also refers to include the teeth. The function of the bones is to store the bone marrow. He says the bones is the the mention of the marrow. That's from that's from the Jing, the bone the bones are the mention of the marrow. The bones also support our physical body and in charge of the movements. This movement is in the in the combination of the muscles, ligaments and bones. The relationship 
among the organs, the bone and the kidney. The kidney stores the essence. The essence can generate the marrow. The marrow can nourish the bone. That's the relationship from the kidney, marrow, the kidney, essence, marrow, and bones. The kidney stores essence. Essence generates the bones. The bone nourishes. Essence generates the marrow. The marrow nourishes the bones. And the teeth is the also considered as bones. So if someone their teeth grows slow, such as in the kids, we think that's the kidney deficiency, or someone lose their bones, their teeth early, in very young age. Then we also can these kind of patients also consider as kidney deficiency. In the treatments we we use the treatments to tonify the bones and to tonify the kidney. The bones also related to many meridians and these we will introduce the, in the meridian session. So as you can see here we introduce all these five body constituents or we call it, or if you you also can call it organs. This actually just an examples as just used as examples for you to understand the body constituents or other parts of the of the body, the relationship between these parts of body to the internal organs and also the function of these organs. So you, you, you need from here you need to study, you need to understand how to analyze, how to use our theories, and analyze different relationship between different phenomena or different organs. The tip to understand this relationship is to find to find out the, the agents in between such as if I ask you what's the relationship between the vessels and the heart, you need to think about what are the agents between the vessels and the heart. The agents also means that's what connects both. This is very similar if I ask you what's the relationship between A and C, but you know A related to B, C also related to B. But in, in this condition, you need to figure out what, what's B, what's in B group. Then you can analyze what's the relationship between them, such as the vessel and the heart. The vessel connects to the heart, that's the relationship. The vessel is the pathways of the blood movement. The heart governs the blood. So as you can see here, the vessel relates to the blood. The heart also relates to the blood. So you can describe, you can analyze the function, the relationship from here, the blood. What kind of relationship is from the, of the blood is from the heart? What kind of function for, of the blood is from the vessels? Then you can understand this relationship of these different body constituents and different organs. Then we're going to introduce some of the orifix. The orifix, all organs, all five organs have the orifix, and these orifix are quite important. Because in our diagnosis, diagnostics and also because they relate they close related to different organs. All these you can see is actually sense 
our sense organs in order to perform proper sense. Proper senses, you need the function of the sound organs or we need the proper sufficient qi and blood from zhang fu organs the first one is the tongue the tongue is related to the heart and the tongue in charge of the taste and it, it is closely related to the swollen uh, swallow pronunciation and pronunciation the tongue also very important in our observation or inspection diagnostic method the, in, the tongue and the pulse on the vessels which is the mind we got the tongue diagnosis we got the pulse diagnosis these we're going to discuss discuss specifically because these are very important and they have a lot of contents on its own so we're going to discuss specifically separately the function of the heart is mainly related to the taste and swallow also pronunciation the, the tongue related to the heart and this is because the meridian link together and also the heart pathological changes can reflect on the tongue such as the the heart fire someone got excess heat in the heart then we will see the tongue the color of the tongue change into red color or if someone got blood stasis the blood circulation doesn't move that well due to the heart problem then we also can see from the tongue the color of the tongue become darker or sometimes we even can see some dark spots on the tongue these can indicate the heart condition that's why we said the tongue is of is orifix of the of the heart and they relate it together the tongue is not only related to the heart it also related to the other organs such as the spleen, the liver, all, all linked, all directly connect to the tongue. These, when we study the tongue diagnosis, we will introduce in details the nose. The nose, the main function of the nose is the breathing the sense of smell and also the nose also assists the, the person the pronunciation the nose also the pathway of the path of the pathogen where the pathogen comes through that's the first pathways the pathogen invades our body from the nerve the lung no, the nose is the orifice of the of the lung, and then the relationship between the the nose and the spleen. So, what's the what's the agents in between? Whenever we talk about the relationship between one to the other, we need to find the agents. That's the tip to understand what's the relate. What's the agents in between that's the blood the the nose and the the spleen that's the blood the, the spleen controls the blood and there's a lot of blood vessels in the nose that's why the spleen problem can reflect on the nose the the nose and the gallbladder, the gallbladder meridian links to the nose. The nose and the kidney. The nose is where the the air the, from the 
the breathing travels and the, the kidney is related to the breathing. We said before that the breathing, the breathing movement is related to the lung and the kidney. So that's the the agent between the kidney, the nose and the kidney. The kidney receives the qi, which assists the breathing. The nose and the heart. The nose and the heart. In our theories, the sense of smelling is from the heart, which reflects in the nose. That's the description from Nanjing. That's why if someone is suffer from impairments of the, the smelling function, so the, the, the sense of smelling is ordered. Then we can focus on the heart, the heart and, the, and the lung. That's from the theories. From the meridian, the nose also linked to many different meridians, such as the foot meridian of stomach and uh, the large intestine meridian of hand yang mi, the blood meridian of foot tai yin, of, of tai yang, the small intestine meridian of hand tai yang, the ren meridian, yang qiao meridian. So when we study the meridian, you will see the direction of these direction and pathways of these meridians. Then you will understand that these meridian are links to the nose. The mouth, the mouth includes all tissues within the mouth. That includes the mouth, the lips, the tongue, the teeth, and the gums, the throat. So when we talk about the mouth, including everything within your mouth, and the mouth is the orifice of the spleen. Also where the, the stomach links. The function of, of the mouth, that's the, the entrance of your food and water, which we also call the grains. On the mouth, we can distinguish different tastes. Actually, this is the similar function. This is actually the function of the tongue. The mouth also can promote saliva. The mouth can help to grind the food, which can assist the digestive function. The mouth also is very, very important for speech, speeches. So the, the main function here, the main function of the mouth is to receive the food, to distinguish the taste, and also to assist pronunciations and speeches. The relationship between the, the, the mouth and sound organs. The spring opens in the mouth. And also the, the meridian links to the mouth. When we study the tongue diagnosis, you will see there's a lot of meridian links to the tongue, that's, which is also linked to the mouth. Because when we refer to the mouth, we also include the tongue. That's why all organs link to the mouth. The teeth link to the kidney, which we have introduced previously when we introduced the bones, the relationship between the bones and the kidney. So the, the teeth related to the kidney, which in the mouth is also related to the mouth. There's another one we're going to introduce here is because these are these two are connected, the mouth and the throat. The throat, the function of the throat 
the pathway of, of breathing also assist the the pronunciation the, the the voice so the the throat is the pathway of the food which goes to which goes to the esophagus so the throat linked to the linked to the lung in terms of breathing the throat also linked to the stomach in terms of the food pathway the throat also linked to the kidney meridian that's why some throats sore throats some tumors we will focus on the kidney it also can be other meridians depends on the condition because there are many different meridians linked to the throat or travels through the throat the eyes and the ear the eyes we're going to introduce uh, separately from this video and we're going to introduce the ear first the ear the main function of the ear is hearing the function of hearing the hearing is related to the heart because the heart in controls the the spirits or the the whole function of the internal organs the five sound organs the heart the ear also related to the kidney directly because the ears are the orifix of the kidney also some meridians link to the ears so you can as you can see that there are many relationships between different organs orifix body constituents tissues and other organs the relationship between them there are many relationships via the meridians it's most common is the qi the blood the meridians so these are the examples of the orifix and body continuums in the next video we're going to introduce the eyes specifically because we got a spe special theories from the eyes so in the next video we're going to introduce the, the eyes theories and the relationship between different organs okay, thank you guys